And we are live for the latest episode of Dice Camera Action. Yay! Yay. Welcome back, everybody. And those of you who are new, thanks for joining us for the first time. Uh, my name is Chris Perkins, and this is the Waffle Crew. And the last time we left them, they had been born back to the dark domain of Barovia by Paulton's shadow, uh, which had been left behind and which contained a shred of the vampire Strahd von Zarovich. In a climactic confrontation in the chapel of Castle Ravenloft, Paulton, fulfilling a prophecy dealt to him by Madame Eva at the start of the campaign, took the sun sword and drove its radiant blade into the shadow, destroying it and uh, blowing Strahd away forever. Uh, in that moment and in the moments thereafter, uh, reality started to do weird things and uh, the Waffle Crew found itself flickering between the, um, the rainy uh, encroaching night and stormy Barovia and a bright sunlit morning um, in a version of the castle that seemed to be from the days of yore. And just before they shifted wholly over to this other time, their uh, wizard acquaintance, Mordenkainen, thrust a bunch of items into Evelyn's hands, things he knew they might need in the future. Uh, and then he faded away. Now, Evelyn and Paulton ran out of the chapel because the roof started to collapse. Well, it didn't start to collapse, it collapsed. Uh, and so they are deeper in the castle now, uh, in a hallway. Um, and when they look back, they can see that the dark, rainy chapel has switched over to brilliant, morning-lit chapel. Uh, no sign of the devastation that they just ran away from. Meanwhile, outside the chapel, in the rose gardens behind it, Diath and Strix were beset by a bunch of flying brooms. And Strix actually got yoinked away by one, was basically pulled through the air by it, and she tried to tame it, but it wouldn't be tamed. Uh, Diath was protecting waffles, whom he just saved from a precarious fall. And Bless you. Bless was you, being, Jared. <laughs> had been surrounded by the brooms when Strix cast a dispel magic on them, and they all clattered to the ground, except the one, of course, that uh, she couldn't control. Uh, but that one, seeing what she had done to its broom buddies, decided to cozen up to her and become her friend. So now she has a broom. And its in name that, is Whiskey. Whiskey. Ah! <laughs> And it, I'm sure Paulton approves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in that moment, uh, Isaac confronted Diath and warned him uh, to stay away from Strix, calling him Lorcatha scum, whatever that means. And Strix bravely, oddly enough, uh, flew in between Isaac and Diath and said the immortal lines, the Waffle Crew is my family, <gasps> defying her brother. And that's when they shifted out of the reality that they were in to a new reality that finds them in a uh, morning lit rose garden, not dead like the one you just left, but live and lush and brilliant with uh, roses of varying hue. And you are suddenly overcome with the smells of spring and the, the smell of the roses in which you find yourselves. Um, the rusted wrought iron fence that surrounds the rose garden is no longer rusted, but actually uh, looks quite new. And as you guys stand there in the morning light, um, still wet from the rain, uh, you hear a sort of a sing-song hum from somewhere in the rose garden and quickly sort of pinpoint it uh, to uh, a figure who is hunched over and picking roses. And as she sort of uh, stands up and sniffs uh, one of the roses that she just picked, you can see that she, be she is Irina Kolyana. Oh, great. It's great. 
Yeah. She's dressed. Totally. She's dressed in this uh, just this uh, almost like a riding outfit. Um, and yes, she is picking roses from the garden and has not yet noticed your presence. Well, I'm really, really allergic to all of these plants because <laughs> it's just not. I'm not having. So I'm just going to start sniffling. Like, oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, when you do that, Irina <laughs> hears you for the first time, turns toward you with some surprise, uh, and then uh, the surprise on her face is quickly masked with an, an expression uh, meant to be a little bit less startled and a little bit more friendly and open. What does uh, it look like? It's clear that she doesn't know who you are. Oh, uh, Hello. My lady, <laughs> Irina, and uh, I run up to her. <laughs> you're not there. No, you're oh. not there. Oh, dang it. You're, you're you're, you guys are. You two are in the castle. Right. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I gotta. Uh, so it's just Strix, Diaz, and Waffles yeah. at the moment, and yeah. uh, uh, and yeah. since Diaz hasn't said anything, Strix will awkwardly try to introduce them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she says. Are you servants of the Duchess? Yes. <laughs> and did she send you to the gardens? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> to collect flowers for the wedding, no doubt. Yes, yes, and I start like, start like picking up, like just putting flowers like in her robes, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But sneezing, like, <coughs> they smell way too good. All right. Uh, yes. And uh, Irina sort of walks uh, over to a basket on the ground uh, where there's some more picked flowers and brings it over to you and just sort of puts it on the ground in front of you so that you can actually lay your flowers in that instead. And she says, um, a good bounty this year. There are more than enough for our needs. Uh, has there, have there always been flowers here? She says, well, I haven't been here very long, but. Where, how long have you been here? I've, is your name Irina, right? Tatiana. Uh, oh. I just look back at Diaz like, eh, any uh, input? So <laughs> <laughs> just worth making eyes this whole time, really uh, awkwardly. And then she sort of leans in, um, sort of smiling and says, I'm the bride. <gasps> That's right. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. We're quite excited for you. We better just keep picking flowers, who's, Strix. Who's the groom? Just puts like more flowers in the basket. Uh, she sort of seems surprised that you don't know. Um, but uh, uh, then when she regains her composure again, she says, his name is Sergei. He's very handsome. Oh, yeah, I've, I've heard about <laughs> that guy. Uh, you, he, you, you, he is but a, a luckier man than and you devout. are a luckier woman. Keep him close! <laughs> <laughs> oh, real close. She says, oh, I intend to. She uh, says, you? Uh, uh, since you are obviously new arrivals here, perhaps you'll have a chance to meet him later. Oh, that would, that would be wonderful. Uh, w when is the wedding? Tomorrow morning. Oh, good. So we still have plenty of time for our preparations. <laughs> she says, yes, and I think we've got enough flowers now. Perhaps we should head inside. I can help you find your mistress. I Sounds think... good. Flowers, more flowers. She says, is that a dog? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's our dog. This is Waffles. Uh, She's harmless. Worry not. She's very faithful. Waffles. Bork, bork. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Waffles will uh, make some sounds and then uh, <laughs> just start kind of running around the garden. Okay. In, okay. in sort of mad energy depleting circles. Aw. Well, I'm, kind of I'm glad she's enjoying, someone's enjoying themselves. I hope there's a butterfly she can chase. Yeah, yeah. In fact, she probably does find a, a butterfly, a bright yellow butterfly that she can leap and bound after. Oh. You don't see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evelyn, I do. Evelyn, what you do see is uh, 
morning light streaming through the stained glass windows of the chapel that you just left, leaving colorful patterns on the floor, uh, so bright and brilliant as to be of a like you've never seen, even in, even in churches you visited in the past. And through the open doors, uh, uh, you can smell uh, hints of incense and also uh, see that uh, there are tapestries with sun arc iconography upon them. The, sun iconography yeah. that I recognize as, as, as being of Lathander. Yes. Um, this hallway that you and Paulton are standing in has armored statues of knights lining it. They're all made of kind of a white alabaster. And there's another set of doors at the far end of the hall that open up and uh, coming through, uh, it looks like they were opened up by a pair of servants and then coming through the doors, making her way toward the chapel and you is a heavy set woman, quite big. Uh, uh, her uh, face done up with makeup in a style that almost makes her look like a waxwork doll. Uh, and she's got draped over her clothes a, long, a heavy quilt that kind of drags on the floor behind her. Um, and it looks like it's not a fashion statement she's trying to make here. Uh, she must have a chill or using the quilt to fight off the castle's draft or the morning cold. And I'm just holding like a seven and a quarter foot pole, yep. and a jug of buttermilk, <laughs> yes, and uh, some iron, iron spikes, spike and a flask of oil. Just yes. And uh, this woman is coming toward you and Paulton with purpose. Um, although she, at first, she seems to be looking past you toward the chapel. Um, uh, there's something about her that suggests aristocracy, and. It seems to be her reflex not to look into the eyes of servants. And at first blush, you think that's what she thinks you are. The two of you. Uh, it looks like she's going to blow right past you if you don't stop her or or do anything. Uh, I think that I don't stop her. I think I just kind of... I'm frozen motionless trying to figure out what's going on here. Paulton, do you want to do anything to stop this large woman? Yes. <laughs> All right. What do you I'm do? Gonna, I'm going to say, hey. <laughs> uh, when you do that, she turns to you with a look of scorn and indignance. Like, how dare you interrupt her morning purpose? Uh, and uh, But then... As she fixes her eyes upon you uh, and kind of sees that you're carrying weird instruments and things, she smiles and says, Are you the Bard of Berez that I've heard so much about? She's talking to me or Paulton? Paulton. Oh. Say, yep, that's me. So you will be performing at tonight's dinner? Yes. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. <gasps> Where's that? She says, here in the castle. Cool. You don't know where you are. You're lost, perhaps. Um, as as uh, per day before bar, bar de preparations, I may have forgotten a few details. She says, this is very important. Much more important than talking to the father. I'll do that any time. How about I take you to a place where you can practice and set up your that music? That sounds wonderful. They have a conservatory here, you know. Oh. And uh, then she notices Evelyn, your companion for the first time, small, small little Evelyn. And she, and then her eyes grow wide, like it's the most marvelous thing she's seen in her adult life. And then she reaches out to Evelyn and just pokes at her, pokes you, <laughs> Evelyn, on the forehead and says, is original von Wierk? Oh, I'm still a construct. She's just sort of tapping your forehead, I... Evelyn, like she's not expecting you to react. It's like, yep, that is correct. Remarkable. I have one, you know. You have one what? Is gift for, for the, for the uh, beautiful couple. Couple? Right. The bride the and couple. groom. Of Sergei course, and Tatiana. Uh, oh, 
<laughs> Evelyn hears this and decides that it's probably best to just like go along with this too. So she starts acting extra robotic and she does like a like super chunky bow and she's like, My lady, what may I call you? She she freaks out and screams in the hall. <laughs> And after letting out a scream, she puts her hands on Evelyn's face and then takes them off and then puts her hands on your face, Paul, and says, how do you get it to talk? <laughs> Mine does not. Evelyn just like smiles motionless like C-3PO. <laughs> Is some it's... sort of magic? Uh, sure. It's a long story. <laughs> Evelyn takes the buttermilk and holds it out to her. <laughs> Would you like some buttermilk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she kind of looks at it suspiciously, kind of smells it. She says, well, it smells all right. I will try. And then look. Wow. God, I hope she doesn't die. <laughs> it's very good. Very good. I'm sure it was. Here My you go, pleasure. little servant construct. <laughs> she gives me the bottle back. Yeah. It's about half empty. Evelyn opens like a compartment and shoves it in. <laughs> 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 she and so uh and then she says, I am Duchess Dorfnia Delisnia. A friend of the families. Duchess he Delicious. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Dorch is delicious. Delicious. Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not there right now. <laughs> pleasure. It's like, well, I am, uh, I'm Paulton, and this is uh, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is robot? So you were saying there was a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm sure you're tired after a long trip from Berez. I take you upstairs now. Okay. We we'll talk on great. the way. Sure, sure, sure. And she says, aren't you cold? I'm freezing. She bundles herself up a bit. So. I cannot get cold. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the Duchess will uh, lead you uh, up into the castle. Um, when she uh, goes back the way she came, uh, the doors open. Uh, she basically knocks on the doors, and then two servants open them up, revealing the grand foyer of the castle where uh, what you arrived with Mordenkainen once and battled some gargoyles and slew the dusk elf chamberlain Rahadin. Uh, now it is uh, spotless, shiny, and not a cobweb to be seen. And... Uh, from there, uh, she takes you upstairs. You can see that there are servants bustling around everywhere, running around uh, almost like chickens with their heads cut off, uh, feverishly trying to get things ready. Some of them have tapestries under their arms. Some mm -hmm. of them have um, candelabra, candlesticks, candelabras uh, that they're shuffling around with. Uh, others are moving around with plates. Uh, others are carrying what appear to be covered dishes uh, upstairs, possibly to guests. You don't know. Um, uh, but the place is absolutely alive as opposed to dead, which is how you're accustomed to seeing it. And she leads you up the stairs, up a spiral staircase into various rooms, and you sort of disappear into the interior. Around the same time that Tatiana outside is suggesting that maybe uh, she can lead Strix and Diath into the castle where they might be um, tended to. I mean, we'll, we'll follow her, or I'll follow her. I mean, Diath. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're good to go. But I want to see Come if there's any this. any plants that I recognize as poisonous or anything I can use as a poison anywhere. Um, <laughs> here in the rose garden, not so much. Uh, but you you might see some other plants in other gardens back here that you can pilfer. All right. If you want to stop and just start ripping them out. Yes, please. Okay, <laughs> done. <laughs> um, anything that looks remotely that I could make a poison out of. Uh, at this point, Tatiana sort of confides in Dieth and says, hmm, I thought she was a maid. <laughs> she is. She's also quite particular about what flowers and plants are on display. She's actually quite the expert in her field, and I 
simply humbly request that you trust her and her expertise. Because I shoot a look at Strix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's an yes. awkward moment where uh, Tatiana and Diaz are forced to wait while Strix is being kind of choosy and selective. <laughs> like sticking them in a room. They're yeah. like sticking out. Right. She comes back with a bunch of plants. And then there's like, like one, <laughs> one weed where she can't get it out of the ground and she starts fighting with it <laughs> and cursing at it. Threatening to put a hex on it. <laughs> it's like shaking it. The broom's just waiting there. It's yes. like, um, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So do I get any poisonous plants? Uh, yes, you get three poisonous plants. Yes. Woo. Uh, would you think, would you think that in order to use the poison, either you have to force feed them the plant or mix it in with something? Perfect. All right. Uh, and then uh, she will lead you uh, around the castle to a servant's entrance and uh, s slip you in that way. Um, Diath, or sorry, uh, Evelyn and Paulton, you're led upstairs to a chamber uh, that, you've, that you had passed through in, in old Castle Barovia. Uh, you can see that a table has been moved into the center of the room and a space has been cleared in the middle and you hear, you can see a couple servants uh, disappear as soon as the duchess shows up. They leave the room promptly. They bow to her as they leave. Um, and uh, pushed around the edges of the room, you can see there is a giant harp and a stand um, that looks like it's designed to hold a lute or a guitar or some other stringed instrument, but there's nothing currently in it. Uh, and uh, you can see in another corner what appears to be uh, a zither um, uh, and some other old instruments uh, and uh, the duchess will uh, lead you through a door into a bath chamber and through there into the master suite uh, she says no one is going to need this room and it's probably quieter than the the conservatory. Looks like they're redressing it for the wedding cake. This will work. Uh, you can see there's a tall canopied bed, uh, quite large. Uh, there is a freestanding mirror. There are decorative suits of armor, a big rug on the floor. Uh, you can also see that uh, there is a large wrapped present uh, standing by the door near some suitcases. Uh, that present is beautifully decorated. It's got a big bow on the front. It stands about four feet, four and a half feet high and is about two, two and a half feet wide and deep. Looks like it might be a wrapped trunk or something standing on its end. And uh, she says, I will reach out to the servants and have them bring you some beverages, but I will make sure that they knock first so as not to disturb you unnecessarily. That would be fantastic. Uh, and then she will leave through uh, uh, the way she came. Now, near the present, uh, the wrapped present and the suitcases, are a pair of double doors that you know lead to Strahd's library and study. Those doors are slightly ajar. And through those doors, you can hear someone playing a lute. But the doors aren't open enough that you can see them. There is a great window across from those doors that looks out over the front of the castle. And you can hear outside, out front, what sounds like marching, like soldiers <laughs> in formation. I look at Paulton and I'm like, are you actually going to play? I mean... I think it'd be awesome if you played. I really like it when you play music. If it helps us, then sure. Also, second question. Okay. What happens if we kill Strahd in the past? I feel like we might have skipped a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, I know, know that we're in the past, right? I feel like I we felt like we were in the past. Maybe we don't. We don't know where we are. 
So never mind, you, I take it back. Uh, you, fe you feel like you're in a different time for sure because okay. everything that, you're, that surrounds you looks like Castle Ravenloft at its, in its heyday. Uh, okay. All the furniture is beautifully maintained. All the wood paneling on the walls is flawless. Uh, there's no dust, no cobwebs. All the chandeliers are clear. This is clearly Castle Ravenloft from a different time. Okay, I take that back and I'm like, how did we get in a better timeline than that? What happened? Like, I don't know. I stabbed a shadow and then like shit went haywire. The clouds and... opened up and the yeah. ceiling was... fell in. and It was, it was, it was cray fam. I told you that sword was powerful. Thank you. I've learned that at this point. <laughs> well, what do we do? No. <laughs> <laughs> she got banished. <laughs> um, I just asked, like, do you, like, do you hear that? Like that? It sounds like it sounds like music through that door. Yeah. Should we go see who it is? Yeah, yeah starts going toward it. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. You sort of poke your heads out, Scooby Doo style. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look into the study, uh, you can see that uh, in front of the fireplace, which has a fire in it, uh, there is uh, two overstuffed chairs. You know that from before. And there are other furnishings in here as well, but they're all sort of uh, beautiful and new. Uh, and uh, the sound of the music is coming from one of those overstuffed chairs. You can't see the figure playing, but you can sort of see one arm and hand on the end of what appears to be a lute, and uh, and it's probably it looks like it's a man is playing that instrument while looking at the fire. Now, above the mantel where you knew there was a giant framed portrait of uh, Tatiana, that portrait is gone. And what you see above the mantle instead is a gigantic mirror that sort of increases or gives the impression that the room is much larger uh, than it was before. Uh, there are also lit candelabras from the ceiling, uh, which gives you enough light around the room to see that seated at the desk, listening to the music but not really paying attention to it, is a woman who you think is probably a Vistani, given her olive complexion and her dark hair. In fact, she looks strikingly similar in many ways to your old uh, friend Esmeralda. And she is seated at the desk with a deck of cards and is kind of uh, drawing them and laying them out on the tabletop. And there's a little lit candle beside her and a cat, a living, breathing cat, um, uh, sort of a uh, uh, on another corner of the desk, looking down at the floor. Hmm. And we can't see in the mirror who is playing the lute. Uh, the angle of the mirror does not allow you to see who that is. I'm going in, Paulton. Uh, <laughs> now, hold on. <laughs> so they don't notice us yet, right? No. Okay. E Evelyn starts shuffling in C-3PO style. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and she walks over to uh, the lady and says... All right, you're, you're, uh, your head is actually a bit lower than the desk, so it's just like <laughs> you just sort of got this little bobbing head above the edge of the desk. It, that's a big desk. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge oak desk, yes. I guess I like... Try. Yeah, you can sort of, if you sort of stand up in your toes, you can look over. Your nose is basically above <laughs> the level of the desk. And uh, yes, uh, when you do, the woman stops drawing cards. And I'd like you to make a, a perception check for me, Anna. Okay. She's like walking in. I'm just like, no, stop, stop. <laughs> uh, hold on, I've got to find my D20. There it is. Every time. <laughs> uh, it's a 17. Uh, you, you've never seen this young woman before, but uh, you could see that her left hand, as she uh, sort of holds a card up, 
the card facing her, not you, um, that she has a ring on one finger with a red stone, and it is the same ring worn by Madame Eva. <gasps> Does she look like she could be She Madame looks Ava? like she could be a young version of Madame Eva. Evelyn takes a gamble and she says, my lady, Eva, and she does a little bobbing bow. She says, my name is Katerina, but Eva's uh, a nice name. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> Would you care for refreshments? Uh, at that point in time, the music stops. And sort of peering around the chair toward you, Evelyn, uh, with some annoyance, I might add, is a young man, probably the same age as the woman at the desk or thereabouts, uh, certainly within five years of each other, uh, with uh, straw blonde hair and a very sort of thin uh, Van Dyke blonde beard. Uh, same color hair and same color eyes as Paulton. Does he look like Paulton in any way or just the same color? You would think a family resemblance. <gasps> and you Evelyn can see tried. he's got, over the eye that's looking at you, he's got a scar, like somebody caught him with a sword above the eye and sort of took off part of his eyebrow. But it's healed. It's, it's, a, it's an old scar. Probably something that happened in his youth, his uncaged Vistani youth. Do I see him? And that's the first time you see him, Paulton. It's like, uh, yeah, it's it's could be could be your long lost brother. Evelyn's eyes kind of like her little, you know, her little construct eyes kind of go, ring, ring. but then she keeps her composure and she says, "I am your new servant, construct. I would bring you." Refreshments. Paulton, do you do anything? Uh, I'm just kind of like staring at him. Like, it looks familiar. Huh. Weird. Evelyn, sh Evelyn shuffles over to him. And you, my lord, uh, enter name, please. Uh, he sort of uh, sets the lute down on the chair, stands up, and kneels down kind of to your level because he's, he's tall and uh, offers... I'm still 5'2", aren't I? Oh, I thought you were actually shorter than that, but never mind. Well, yeah, didn't so... you say I was one-to-one -one scale? Yeah, you are. Okay. But for some reason, I, for some reason, I falsely re remembered or that five, you were actually under five, five feet. feet. But Maybe that, I am. Okay, but anyway. I think I'm... Wait. So he will, he will kind of bow down to you and extend his hand in friendship, uh, basically trying to shake your construct hand. Oh, that's nice. I'm officially five feet tall, I just checked. Great. Um, he extends a hand. Yes. I, I go. And he says, greetings, pretty one. I'm Jesper. Jesper, thank you. Do you care for refreshments? And then he looks up at Katerina behind the desk and says, it's remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> Who made this? And uh, Katerina says, that construct is not what it seems. <sighs> and she lays down a card and then she draws another one and she says, it is from a different Time, she says. You, Evelyn just stands like this. And then she draws <laughs> another card, looks at it, and says, A time that I may yet live to see. And then she draws another card. This one was not always what she appears to be. And then Jesper is even more intrigued. He's like, really? Was she alive? <laughs> he looks just like... <laughs> she looks just like Paulton. And, uh, do I, yeah. Do I hear all of this? Yes. 
I'm just I'm just standing in the back like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says to you, Evelyn, you can talk, but do you drink? Uh, no, thank you. It's Kind. A- yeah, hurt. <laughs> it's at this point where some of the uh, the buttermilk starts to seep out <laughs> from your compartment and run oh, down wrong. and run down your leg, Ew. and you don't <laughs> notice it until you hear it go sort of plip 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 down on the floor because you have no feeling. That's <laughs> so gross. <laughs> it like spilled because I'm like. Dee, 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 dee. And then uh, and then it looks down at the floor at the puddle of buttermilk and it says, "Apparently, it can <laughs> drink." <laughs> I reach in for the bottle <laughs> and hold it up to him. You can see that it's the bottle has sort of fallen on its side inside oh, of you. Gosh. So when you kind of open up the compartment, it, there's just sort of like this sploosh. <laughs> Evelyn holds it up to him and then is like, oops, and drops it. <laughs> and then is like, oh, clumsy me. I will return and starts to try to leave. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to hose her out. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna spoil real fast. Yeah, yeah, that's so gross. <laughs> I'm trying to depart. Oh, like okay. a robot, like C3PO. I'm like, oh, I gotta go clean that up. Ah. Are you going in just a random direction, or are you going back somewhere? Toward the door, toward Paulton. Okay. I'm trying to to return with the information I have gathered. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh. Tatiana leads Strix and Dieth up a staircase that spirals around the inside of a very large, wide tower. And when she gets to an open doorway leading out onto the battlements and can hear what sounds like horse hooves, she says, Oh, come with me. You have to see this. We'll see it together. Oh, yes, they ma'am. sound like big horse hooves on a carriage. And then uh, she sort of grabs you both by the hands and kind of pulls you along. And she says, my Sergei has returned. Great. Oh, splendid. <laughs> and uh, she rushes down the battlements. And from up here outside, you can see out onto the walls of Castle Ravenloft and see that there are guards on the walls that you never saw before uh, dressed in their gleaming armor and carrying their spears and crossbows. Uh, And as you make your way around the battlements toward the front of the castle, you get a view of the front courtyard, the courtyard between the keep on which you stand and the gatehouse out front with the drawbridge. And uh, entering the courtyard, having just galloped across the drawbridge, are three figures on horseback. Uh, The one in the lead is Strahd, alive, And in the flesh, he is riding a great black stallion. Uh, Looks remarkably similar to the the flame-hoofed, flame-maned one that he rode as undead. But this black stallion is now alive. And behind him, and Strahd is wearing his fur-mantled cloak. He's got a sword at his side. And all the regalia you'd expect of a kingly figure. Um... Uh, and his stirrups uh, sort of gleam in the morning. And then behind him, on a uh, beautiful white and brown horse, is a younger man who could be his brother, uh, dressed in uh, light uh, gleaming armor and uh, with what appears to be a tabard or symbol of the morning lord on his chest. And he carries a golden hilted, he has a golden hilted sword by his side. Um, and uh, uh, he, uh, whereas Strahd and his features suggest a man carved by war, this younger uh, brother figure is uh, somehow in his posture, in the way he ho- holds his reins, in the way he just presents himself a much lighter figure, um, untempered, and uh, uh, a smile on his face, Um, a happiness to be back home. And then uh, the third figure that you see is uh, maybe some sort of guard or guard captain you don't recognize because he's under a helm, 
uh, and seems to be accompanying the brothers on their return. And as they uh, enter the courtyard and approach the entrance, they stop and begin to dismount. And a bevy of servants pour out of the castle doors below you uh, uh, to tend to their need. Now, in the castle courtyard, you can see lines of soldiers that have just been marching here, now moved to formation to greet their lord in a very formal way. And uh, some of them have banners that have the Ravenloft uh, Barovian crest on them, and others are just standing with their swords drawn, held up to their chests, um, perfectly silent. The lead, uh, following the servants out into the courtyard and greeting uh, the king and his brother is Rahadin, the palace chamberlain, the dusk elf, whose screams echoed through your mind and haunted your soul, who you killed in the castle, alive and well. He takes Strahd by the hand, um, and then they have a conversation that you can't hear. And uh, Tatiana is perched on the battlements, looking down, and points to her beloved Sergei and says, that is my groom. Isn't he beautiful? He is quite handsome. <laughs> Very handsome. The word I use is dashing. Dashing, no? Oh. Yes, dash. He's dashingly handsome. Look he how alive he is. He should dash <laughs> into your arms. He's so dashing that he should. He yes, should he is dash. so full of life. So full of life. He is. Uh, he was raised in the teachings of the Morning Lord. Uh, we have a friend that was raised in the teachings of the Morning Lord. They and, talk about it all the time. And, does he uh, talk about it all the time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does talk quite often. <laughs> <laughs> that must just be a thing they do then. This, uh, this is all quite wonderful, and we cannot yeah. wait for your grand ceremony Paulton, tomorrow. Paulton, uh, shadows seem to fall in the room behind you, and that's because when you look past Evelyn, who's marching toward you, back into the room in which you stand, uh, there are figures standing outside the window on the battlements that you never saw before. One uh, seems to be, although you can't tell just by looking at her back, Irina Kolyana, reborn. Uh, the mm -hmm. other two are very familiar to you, uh, your companions, Dieth and Strix. They've got their backs to the great window of the master bedchamber. You're pretty sure they won't be able to hear you through the glass. You'd have to open the window. And they're at this distance, you know, this room is yeah. huge you're in. It's about 40 feet away. Uh, I'm going to like, I'd, I'd nudge Evelyn, but I feel like I'd hurt myself. Mm. <laughs> Do I, did I make it out of the room? You, they let me you make it back to the doors where Paulton is uh, currently standing behind. So they just, the, the two in the room just allowed me to say that I was leaving and leave. Yeah, um, okay. the, the, the man just sort of started laughing uh, at you. And, <laughs> and the okay. woman uh, looks at you and just sort of says, most puzzling. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see them outside of the window, so I'm just going to like, like, pinky one's head, just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's poking me today. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I'm just going to point at the window and be like, look. Oh my goodness. Yes, you can see uh, as, uh, as uh, Irina turns in profile to speak to Dieth and Strix, and you can see her more clearly. Yes, it is indeed Strahd's bride risen from the grave, or what is some going facsimile. On? I don't know. What do we do? I don't know, but have you ever seen that blonde guy in there? Because he looks a lot like you. Did did he? Do I feel like I've seen him before? Um, without a real close up look, it's a little hard to tell. But I'm going to have you make a perception check. Okay. Uh, that would be an eight. I really think you should go no. look at him. Definite no. family resemblance, but you don't. You can't say you know he's somebody you met in your lifetime. Okay. It's like, I didn't, I didn't get a good look at him. So I don't know. I think you should go talk to him. It's very, it's uncanny. But, but the, 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 the with the outside and uh, there's, there's so many options of things we should do right now. I'm get, <laughs> like I'm, I'm getting decision fatigue. I don't know what to do. 
<laughs> decision fatigue. <laughs> uh, it's, at, it's at that point that the present, the wrapped present, which is only about five feet away from you, standing just inside the, the master bed chamber, uh, kind of shakes. <laughs> oh, God. I look at that, I'm like, no, now there's things. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, can we hear them screaming now? No, uh, they're not screaming. <laughs> you no. can scream. I'm, I'm whisper know. yelling. Like, there's a guy in this window, and now the box is moving, and why is the box? Oh, God. I don't like this timeline. At this point, I think that I have enough evidence that Evelyn says, I think we are in the past. <laughs> <laughs> What about the moving box that I'm still really concerned about? Do you want me to stab it? Maybe. We'll put a we'll put a pin in that. What if there's a puppy in it? Greater good. <laughs> okay. So the question is, find Death and Strix because I think that should probably be a priority. Go Every figure out why Arena is here? <laughs> we see that? Yeah, he points across the room through the giant windows, <laughs> oh. and you see uh, the backs of DF and Strix looking out down upon the courtyard below. All right, cool. One out of three done. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Well, second was figure out why the heck Arena's here, so we should just go see. I look at the box. I'm just like, uh, okay, let's go. Okay, I want to open the box too. Let's just open the box. <laughs> Should we? It's like, but it's not our box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. That's that's very very morally mature. Well, well, I was gonna say this. That makes it even more tempting. <laughs> so I don't know. I've got buttermilk all over me. I think I just met someone related. I'm just very confused. I don't know. It's like, all right. Here's the plan. And before I say anything, I'm just going to walk over and open the box. <laughs> okay. So you you sort of uh, tear open the wrapping paper uh, to. I forgot that it was wrapped. <laughs> Discreetly, I try and like. Oh, okay. I try and like like you know, kid who found their present. Keep the tape on. Yeah. Okay, I will uh, let you make a dexterity sleight of hand check. All if right, you don't have right, the sleight right. of hand skill, it's just a dexterity check. Okay. You should be good at this. Uh, it'd be 10. Okay, so this is not rocket science. So yeah, you're able to very carefully um, remove the wrapping paper without tearing it, and you sort of undo the ribbon uh, in a way that would allow it to be tied back up again. And so the wrapping paper just kind of gets folded and falls away, exposing uh, a box, kind of an un unremarkable pine, uh, but well-fitted box uh, with sort of a shiny varnish. And... Um, you can see that it's got clasps, but not locks. So you can just basically unclasp the lid. Um, it's almost like a little little standing coffin. Before I do that, I'm gonna like knock on it. Okay. How many little, knocks? Just like a little. Just like like little. Here. Back. Oh God. Like. I turn to Evelyn, I'm like, there's something in there. Oh, Anna, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I, I'm not telling you to open it, because that would kind of All right, I'm going to open stealing. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, when you open it, you see that it's lined with, uh, well, the first thing that happens is a bunch of peanuts fall out. No. Oh. Uh, basically, uh, some some stuffing uh, falls onto the ground, and you can see that the interior of the box is lined with purple velvet uh, to sort of soften its inside, and that Ooh. there is all this sort of what looks like uh, feathers and pillow stuffing or sheep's wool um, uh, in here. But nested inside the cavity is Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Now Do there's a, cu a couple one one minor uh, difference is that this isn't the sort of beat up 
old, deteriorated, you're rotting away jester costume Simon. This is freshly painted, <gasps> waxed, uh, polished Simon. All of his clothes are pristine. The colors are pristine. All the bells are on his jester hat. Uh, you can see that the soot-made jack-o'-lantern makeup that was on his face is not there, and it's more of uh, you know a, a well-painted face still kind of clownish and freakish in a way but um, i like drop my knees like my son <laughs> <laughs> does evelyn see it oh Not yes yet, right oh yeah you oh, sort I of peer it. around the corner of the lid and yes you see simon at that point she totally does scream <laughs> with excitement and like runs over all right and just uh, falls down next to paulson and yes like, he he will <laughs> sort of uh, come walking out of the the box with some of the the packing material kind of still stuck to him uh, and then he just sort of tries to get it off even just like uh that scream that scream Diath and strix i'm gonna let you make perception checks for that one. <laughs> oh god <laughs> Evelyn's just holding Paulton's arm and like looking at him and looking at Simon and like <laughs> I got 20, a 12. 24. 12. Uh, okay, Strix, you do not hear it over the sound of the ruckus below, but Diath, through the big giant window behind you, you hear Evelyn's mecha scream. <laughs> All right, like immediately like look back, assuming that it's her in some kind of danger. Yeah, you have a hard time looking through the window at first. You kind of have to yeah. put your hands like right up to it, cover your eyes, and boom. Go right up to look inside. But when you do, you're looking into the master bedchamber of Castle Ravenloft. And on the far side of the room, uh, near some ajar giant doors, uh, you see Paulton kind of on the ground, uh, uh, Evelyn kind of freaking out, and a figure that is unmistakably... A murder bot. Oh no. Okay. So, so <laughs> looks like they just unwrapped somebody's present. So from that camera viewpoint of just Diaz in the window in the background, yeah. <laughs> you see him go. <laughs> <laughs> so you really run run away. Like like because Strix is right there. Do you just like jump off the balcony? No, like you, what? You go back yeah. and find Strix, sir. <laughs> be like, oh, we got to go and take care of our preparations. You should go see your husband to be. Come All right. on. Maybe All right. also stay away from his brother. Okay, so door. yeah, you pull uh, you pull Strix away. You have some parting words with Tatiana. And uh, where is it that you, DF, intend to take Strix at this point? Towards the vague direction that I saw Evelyn and Paulton to stop this. Okay, you have Good you have luck. you have two <laughs> options. You can either run around the castle and look for another window that you can get into, or a door. Those are possibilities. Um, or you can try using your thieving ability to uh, open the openable parts of this window from the outside. Essentially, use your thieves' tools to try to flip a catch or two, and because um, it looks like the this master window ha does have swinging out parts. How entranced is Tatiana right now looking at Sergey? Uh, she would notice a break in. <laughs> okay, I, could, I could distract her. I could like I could give me eyes and be like, I can distract her if you want me to. Or uh, you think it would not be much to convince her to go down and meet her beloved in the in the uh, downstairs? Yeah, I do that. It's like, oh, you should go meet meet up with her. Meet okay. up with him. She Don't she worry. she asks you to make sure she wants to make sure you're all right. You'll be able to find your way. We certainly are. We'll take these flowers, and Amy and I will uh, continue the preparations. Who? She'll take Amy. She'll take what? It, <laughs> she'll take one of the flowers out um, and just sort of cradle it, and you can tell just by looking at her face that she's going to give it to Sergey. Uh, and then she hastens off and disappears, leaving you by the window. Amy. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll go over to that window and immediately just like angrily throw it open. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paulton and Evelyn, you can hear the window frame kind of shake and see Diaz up in the window, basically using uh, his thieves tools to flip it open. Go make your uh, dexterity sleight of hand check, Diaz. Could I just be like, oh, Diaz, and just like swing the window open? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the sleight of hand was 21. Okay, so as Dia flips the catch, Paul used to open another one right next to him. 
<laughs> like, get in here. <laughs> yeah. All right. You are once more united. Dear their son. I don't think he's happy about that. Yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm so ecstatic for you. Uh, I'm going to make sure all the other doors to this room is immediately is closed and just close them all up. Okay. Right now. Done. You are and now I, you're now hermetically sealed in the master bed chamber of Ravenloft. Great. Great. Oh, just what you wanted. So, I know we're back in time as well, right? Where we figured that out mostly, have we? Uh, y- yes. Based on okay. all the evidence you've seen, you are clearly at an earlier time okay. before the fall of Barovia. All right. Um, I will also tell them that Strahd is outside. Uh, we just saw him walk in. Just so you guys know. Uh, I got some poison plants, though. So. Yes, you did. And I need you to throw those away. No! <laughs> I'm yes. not throwing, no! No, listen. I mean, no. We know I'm what's not- we know what's going on here. We can't do anything. Yes, we can. No, we can't. If we do anything, everything gets all whack. Look, hold person, stuff plants in mouth, mash them up, run. That could change everything. It'll cha- completely change the history of everything that happened here. It could change everything in other planes of existence. Who knows? It could make it, you could shoot in such a change that we may never meet. Maybe well, Colton's never born here. That would be sad, but maybe it doesn't work like that. Do I know if it works like that? <laughs> uh, make an arcana check. Okay. See if you skipped temporal mechanics. Oh, no. Did I? I didn't. Uh, 21. All right. So the study of time and the magical ability to manipulate time, a.k.a. chronomancy, is a very underappreciated and understudied uh, segment of arcane magical lore. But uh, with your role, Strix... Oh, boy. And your understanding and experiences in Barovia. Um, First of all, you're not altogether sure what propelled you back here, short of possible divine intervention. Um, Oh, no. This would, this would, this this is either the work of gods or somebody using some kind of wish spell or something very, very, very powerful. Hmm. B, uh, Barovia... um, from all you that you know, was kind of pulled out of its native realm uh, to the Shadowfell and trapped there after Strahd became a vampire. So if you're in Barovia, it could be in wherever Barovia actually came from. Or you are in a version of Barovia that is sort of locked um, in time, almost like a, a part that's played over and over and over again, ad infinitum, um, mm. that kind of uh, led to the creation of the domain of Barovia that you know and despise so much. Mm. Uh, in which case, that whatever happens here may not necessarily echo or resound out into the greater world, but could have consequences for the future of Barovia and Barovia alone. Right, so our experiences won't go away. Right. All right. Except those in Barovia? So you think potentially, let's say, for instance, you were to, well, I don't know, kill Strahd. <laughs> I don't know. And Strahd never actually gets around to killing his brother and uh, causing the death of his brother's bride. Um, it is possible, based on your role, that the consequences for Barovia would be profound, i.e. it would never sink into darkness and its people would not be lost. Would that change who you are or say who Paulton is, who has ties to Barovia? It might, but it wouldn't erase you. Hmm. All right. Well, I will articulate all of my schooling. <laughs> Apparently that yeah. where I wasn't just yeah. drawing r- rats and bats on my school. Likely, likely your experiences and what you know would never change. All right. So I'll tell them that. And I'll also make sure to look poignantly at Evelyn and say, a power brought us here. Yes. Probably to do some good. You like that, right? Evelyn's like, kind of like not, she's, she's not looking at you. She kind of nods. She's <laughs> kneeling. She's kneeling on the floor. Oh. And she's looking really closely at Simon, or at Simon, and just kind of like looking Strix at her. Strix is gonna kick her over. Arm. She looks at her arm, and then she looks at Simon, and then she looks at her chest, and then she looks at Simon. She's like mind blown right now. 
Strix is so mad that she's not listening to this important uh, information. Simon is kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon, or whatever he thinks he is, um, looks you up and down too, Evelyn, um, sort of comparing, contrasting. But he doesn't say anything. <sighs> Nor, Strix based on the way his mouth is built, it, does it seem like he could say anything. He can't talk. The more important situation right now is how do we get back? Oh, I don't know if I know that. <laughs> I, pretty much a power, someone powerful enough to be a power, a god. Yeah, Lathander, we know. Yeah. Here. We don't know if it here. was Lathander. It, it could have been the dark powers. We don't know. They are also a power. But it was Lathander. Now, if you okay. recall, tomorrow is Tatiana's wedding to Sergei. And during the wedding itself is when Strahd murders Sergei. And that's when Tatiana throws herself off of the castle. Right. No, well, whiskey and I can save her if that happens. <laughs> and you're saying it might be a good thing to completely change the outcome? Yes, we can save the people of Barovia. We can make it so that they never have to be Barovia. They never have to be sad. That never has to happen. But Evelyn perks up at this and she's like, we can? Let's do that. But there is a small possibility that everything we have and know about each other. No, no, no. That's There's no possibility. We'll be fine. I don't think I believe you. I know magic. I it's fine. <laughs> and we have I, Simon now. Meanwhile, while she says she knows magic, she's going to press the digitation, the buttermilk out of Evelyn because it's gross. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> nice. You're welcome. It might like, I don't know, stick your gears or whatever's in there. I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much what I'm trying to say, it won't change anything that happened to us. It, it might change Paulton considering that, that, you know, Paulton is from here. Wait, what? Change Paulton? Does Paulton? Yeah, what? Change Paulton? <laughs> Strix will try and explain it to Paulton. <laughs> but she'll use way smaller words. <laughs> like, yes, please. I just got reunited with my dead son, so I'm kind of going through a lot. He is not your son. He's he not his here. son! Well, it's not just Paulton. What about you, Strix? With, and Isaac? I personally, I would like to forget about that. Just, <laughs> anyone I disagree? Would. I mean, I, just, I, I mean, don't. No, I don't, I don't disagree, but. I don't know. Worst that... case scenario, I, I forget. Best case scenario, I forget. So I know, how what is happens... Paul? How is Paul get... reacting to this? Because we he fell to his knees, but then like, is he fine or is he? I'm just like, there's a lot going on. I'm <laughs> I'm trying my best to keep up. <laughs> so like, what okay. if we do we change things or whatever, and we get whisked back? hopefully, to when, when we were or where we were, what guarantee we have that we'll still even be together, that we'll still know each other? The fact that I know magic. Well, Dia, would you put us knowing each other over the lives of all of those Barovians and the suffering they went through? Yeah, I would. Evelyn kind of nods and like didn't expect that answer, but is thoughtful. Look, everything that happened here has already happened. I'm not sure we can or are supposed to change that. Well, if you really want to know and you don't trust my opinion, you can always ask your sword. I don't <gasps> want to mess with that. Nuh -uh. Ask your sword. Ask I'm your not sword. asking the sword. Ask... Do I know about the sword? <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't think you do. That's a very no, good even, question. Even does that. Ask your sword. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, I don't recall Diath ever saying, here's my sword, Evelyn. Would you like to meet it? And no, getting, I don't think no. so either. Nice. Yeah. But, but she like, does. She's like, ask it. Wait, what? Strix would know, of course. What? Yeah, Strix will be like, yeah, so Diath has a sword. That's apparently... No, stop! <laughs> and it summons Shemeshmeshmeshka. Shemesh, uh, that's an lot. She's very powerful. She's from Sigil. That's where I'm from. And then oh. if we really wanted to go, we could probably just like open it and jump through the portal. But I really don't think that's a good idea. So we should oh. never, ever, ever do that. That sort of but sounds, she apparently will answer questions. Just for Dia, though. But she's really mean. And she tried to sell me as a slave once. Or buy oh. me as a slave. I'm sorry. Yeah, buy she you. sucks. Yes. 
She's the worst. That, that sword sounds amazing. I'm kind of jealous. That's also awesome. Talks. We should use it. Talking sword? Can I talk I, to it? Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Paulton, uh, Paulton kind of regains his composure, like stands back up. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, there's a lot going on. And there's a lot to take in. I'm still not sure what's going on. And I don't want to alarm anybody, but I'm pretty sure we've been sent to a different time. <laughs> <laughs> Eva's like, yeah, she passed it. Oh my God, Paul, uh -huh. you're right. <laughs> oh, wow. Just, listen. Mind blown. <laughs> listen, we had to kill Strahd. We've killed Strahd. We killed Strahd again. Whatever power wanted us here wants us to kill Strahd again. One last time. Right. That's what we need to do. Strix, do you wholly believe that this is what we're supposed to do? Yes, why else would we be here? Cool, let's do it. Evelyn? The doors to the room rattle. Uh, somebody is... I mean, hug Strahd, not kill Somebody him. sort oh, of grabbed, grabbed the handle and realized the door has been locked. <laughs> I think Lathander sent me back for this express purpose, and we must kill Strahd. Also, Palton's dad, I think, is in there. You hear the rattling of what? keys. Okay, uh, Dieth will, like, kind of take a brief swallow to himself and give a quick nod and say, for safety, we can't use our real names. Strix, you're The Amy. doors open. <laughs> 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 and you see I... a figure standing in the doorway in front of you as, the, as this double door parts right in front of you uh, near the open present and the pile of luggage. Uh, the figure standing in is instantly recognizable as the Dusk Elf Rahadin. Uh, Evelyn immediately goes... <laughs> Dieth is wiping the with... window with his glove just Simon just turns his head 200 and odd degrees around and just kind of doesn't move his body but just looks toward the Chamberlain uh, who takes you all in in an instant and uh, he snaps his fingers and orders you out orders us out? yep I, I scutter like a cockroach when the lights turn on. And uh, you're close enough to him that you know, normally last time you were this close to Rahadin, uh, you heard the screams echoing around him. There's none of that. I like, I like remember that and like walk by him and then like stop, <laughs> just kind of like lean in. <laughs> huh. Evelyn takes, uh, like robotically takes Simon's little hand yeah. And tries to, like, C-3PO and R2-D2 walk out with him. Okay. You <laughs> succeed. Sweet. Um, Rahadin turns to too? you. Uh, yeah, you still have waffles. Strix has okay. waffles nearby. Uh, Paulton, uh, Rahadin turns to you uh, and says, I spoke to the Duchess. She says you will be performing at tonight's dinner. Correct, sir. He says... The master is coming. You should find another place to practice. Can do. And he just sort of, he, he moves aside to let you past. All the while giving you a suspicious look. I just give him like a... <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you guys exit the room into the study, you see that the... The Vistani woman is gone, but she's left her cards on the desk. Yoink! The man playing <laughs> the uh, lute is gone, and the lute is still resting on the chair. What does it look like? The lute? Uh, you'd have to go around to the chair to pick it up to really get a good look at it. Oh, I'm so bummed. This, I wanted to show you guys these people. I, I think they looked really familiar. Yep. It's yeah. fine. Everything here's bad. Yes. I go, I go, sh uh, pick up the loot and I kind of hold it up to Paulton and I'm like, "What do you think? You stop fucking with things." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you see that, um, in fact, it's not a loot. It's a mandolin, and it looks like that. Ooh. Evelyn tries to play. Paulton, it. you can make an Arcana check. Oh boy. Intelligence. Yeah. All right. All right. Evelyn's uh, like when you strum an open guitar where it's like, clang, clang, clang. 
Uh, 15. Uh, you believe that this is an item called, a magic item, called an instrument of the bards. Uh, a Ooh. famous item called the Kenneth Mandolin. It incorporates images of... Uh, uh, sort of, there's a bit of a Celtic knock motif combined with images of lightning bolts. That's so cool. Oh, too bad we gotta leave it behind. It's like, yeah, oh. totally. And I'm just gonna tuck it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Strix is totally gonna walk up to those cards for sure. You can see that the cards are actually left pretty much untouched from when she just got up, but uh, there is a very distinctive and familiar cross-shaped pattern. Um, four cards with a fifth card in the middle forming the cross. And then the rest of the stack is off to the side, and those cards are all faced up. You see um, in the top card position is the Two of Swords, or the Paladin card. Oh, great. In the <laughs> bottom position is the Raven card. Okay, starting to get a picture. In Getting the, more scared. the uh, card to the west, or the left, is the Master of Coins, or the Rogue card. Okay, getting And the concerned. card to the east, or the right, is the Five of Stars, or the Elementalist card. All right. And the card between them all is the Three of Glyphs, mm -hmm. or the Healer card. Whew, thought it was going to be death. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it was going to be death. Whew, all right. Um, I got, Strix kind of gets an idea of this, for sure. That uh, obviously we're here to fix this place. And she's going to point at it and be like, look at this magic on the desk. It means we're here to fix it. No, thanks. I already have one. Wait, what? I, the cards. I've already got one. It's fine. No, no. These aren't for you. It's This is good. This is a good thing. Evelyn comes over and looks, and she's like, yeah, they're real pretty. <sighs> No one is listening to me today. So just, I'm just going to sit on the floor. <laughs> All right. Oh, look, that one looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Strahd enters. <laughs> I crawl yeah. to the desk. Uh, he comes through a uh, secret door in the corner, which you know has a staircase behind it. Um, and the door just sort of closes quietly behind him. Uh, he does not even look at any of you. He just walks across the room to the doors to his master suite, opens them, turns, looks into the room where you all stand or are hiding, as the case may be. <laughs> With the owl bear. And, uh, <laughs> and the owl bear and closes the doors behind him, like he couldn't have given two fucks. <laughs> uh, see that? Make I an insight check. Rogue. Insight. 18. Very good. Ooh. 11. Uh, oh, uh, 19. I got a 12. Okay, the 11 and 12 is enough to suggest that there's... Um, uh, Paulton and Strix, you would say that he's got a look of annoyance, uh, whereas Weird. Evelyn and Diath would say that he is uh, consumed by other thoughts, that he is so in his head right now that he's not even really paying attention to anything else. Why Wait. didn't we? Why didn't we attack him just now? Because it's fucking strong. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not strong yet. Yeah, he's not a vamp wall, is he? Mm. Did he look alive? Uh, the Strahd of this era, if, if, the, if what you've been told uh, of, of your history of this place is, is to be counted on, uh, is after his father died, after his father, King Baroff, died, he became the king apparent, though he was never crowned. Um, he never had his coronation. 
and he picked up his father's sword, took over his father's armies, and won all of his father's remaining wars, driving all the enemies into the Valley of Barovia, slaughtering them, and then building the castle here because he thought it was a very pretty place and a nice place to do so. So this is General Strahd, King Strahd, um, Master of Armies Strahd. Guys, that was mm. Strahd. Uh, <laughs> How drunk are you? Okay, look. Not we enough. The, we know the wedding is tomorrow morning. We need a plan. When do you want to act? Well, let's go. Uh, I hate that this door ago. is right there. Well, there are lots of other. You could you could take your uh, take the mandolin and scooch and find just another corner of the castle to conspire in if you don't want to be in his study slash library. Definitely don't. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> Why don't yeah. we go right now? No, we can't right now. We need a plan. We need an actual plan. And I we also we need to we also we also need to show that he's the one who's bad. If we start going around just being like, up oh, they're dead, then like we look like just straight up murderers. We can't we have to be like he was planning this all along. You know what I mean? Right. So you think we should wait until the actual wedding itself or when he makes his move and then intervene? Yes. Okay. I like Strix's idea. The will of Lathander waits for no one's perception. It doesn't matter what these people think of us. It matters that we do his holy will in the light of the morning Lord. Right, baby Simon? Uh, Baby Simon just sort of looks at you quizzically and just... (laughs) See, he's already grown up so smart. (gasps) I just got an idea. It's a bad idea. Let's do it. Oh, it's so bad, (laughs) but it's a, oh, okay. It's a wonderful, right. bad idea. <laughs> All right. Now, you know, I can do this, and Strix will turn herself into um, <gasps> Strahd's brother. Sergei. Oh. If we can capture him and get him and polymorph him and keep him on us when we know that Strahd murders him, I can be bait, and Strahd can come after me and try and kill me. He doesn't know I have magic and I know magic. So what we can do is all of us can be waiting, invisible or otherwise. And then as soon as he comes to kill me, as in Strix, as Sergey, but not but not Sir, but Strix, then we jump it. And we make Sergey watch the whole thing. Like hide him in a closet or something behind us. And be like, see, he sucks. That is a terrible idea. I don't like putting you in danger, but I'm into it. This is a terrible idea. All right, let's go kidnap him. (laughs) Wait, so we're kidnapping Sergei? Yeah, and then I'll be Sergei. I'm still Sergei right now. I'm so handsome. (laughs) You look real real nice. I have big muscles. (laughs) Also, this suddenly reminds me that we had a date with that not king who we were supposed to go see in three days so yes, you can it... pretend to be king yes well we were also supposed to get rewarded but here we are so <laughs> let's just uh... strix make a perception check oh, oh no uh 13. okay oh okay great <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Uh, well, I'm still Sergey, just standing there, just like, "Hey, we're gonna do all this crazy stuff." <laughs> Any input from? It's a bad idea, I know, but it's all we have. I like it. I don't know what else to do. Otherwise, we just lay in wait and try to defend Sergey when Strahd decides to attack. I just don't know that we'd be quick enough in that case. Eh. Uh, well, should we go, like, do servantly things? <laughs> I think so. I, I already tried to bring him drinks. They didn't want any. Look, there's a lot of people here. I think we can fake it long enough. Tumbling into the room... Um, through the servant's door is Sergei and Tatiana. And you can see oh. that Sergei has Tatiana in his arms and they're sort of, they sort of stumble into the room uh, spinning around romantically. 
uh, kissing Uh-oh. each other, and they sort of bang up against some furniture and laugh and stop before they realize there are actually people in the study. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, cowboy. <laughs> Quickly, not Sergey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, also, they do. They, they probably would kind of look at you before your illusion falls. All right. I'm just going to hold my hands up and be like, we need to talk to both of you immediately. Um, they uh, they uh, kind of laugh at you, uh, like this is, must be some sort of joke. Oh, all right. Okay. okay. First all of right. all, no kissy sure. kissy before the wedding. And second all right. of all, we're from the future. Shut and- up, robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, change back into Sergey and do the whole I'm you from the future thing. <laughs> Strix will change into Sergey. <laughs> yes. And say, I'm you from the future. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> we've, please work, please work. We've come to warn you <laughs> that you are in grave peril. I'm providing dramatic background music <laughs> with, the new, with the new mandolin. I grab Paulton by the shoulders. How is he supposed to be Sergey from the future when Sergey dies? Do they hear that? <laughs> 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 Great Does hear that? He doesn't know. And uh, Tatiana I mean, says, that's not very funny. No, it's not funny. You uh, are in grave and, peril. Uh, and Sergei says, I, I hope you will have better act for dinner tonight. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> the act is crouched down up. behind their legs. Uh, and to then uh, the Tatiana and Sergei sort of look at each other and both at the same time says, Theater performers. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then oh, no. Strix is and gonna walk up and uh, grab them both and uh, say, just look at them extremely seriously as Sergey and just say, You cotters are gonna die if you don't listen to us right now. We are here to save you and we need your help. And then she's gonna try and intimidate them. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Oh, oh yeah, that's not too bad. Uh twenty. Oh sorry, right. twenty one. Uh, you do intimidate them, and they suddenly realize that they are being put, uh, sort of set upon, not by any mere entertainer or musician or whatever, by a crazy, deranged person um, who, who th- in whom they become instantly terrified. Uh, you have got their attention. <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn comes in with a... She tries to do, like, a persuasion type of thing where she's like, uh, pay, I'm sorry for my friend. She's just very concerned for your well-being. But we have come indeed to save you. We've been blessed by the Morning Lord with visions of the future, and we know what happens tomorrow. We'd like to save a you from dart, our unpleasantness. dart from somewhere flies out uh-huh. and sticks Tatiana in the neck. What? No! Baby <laughs> Simon! Baby, baby Simon! I think he's... And then uh, his mouth closes. And she falls over. Or sort of falls, and then Sergei catches her before she hits the floor. I'm I'm real real sorry about that. He's still still getting trained. Diaz, make a perception check. I don't think I need to perceive that I hate that thing. The plan's already ruined. We had the plan for five minutes, and it's already ruined. Uh, 24. All right. Uh, something that Strix didn't notice was that a couple of uh, some of the cards from the table had apparently fallen down onto the floor. Oh, come on! <laughs> They're just cards. Who cares? Which cards were they, Chris? Yeah, which uh, cards? When you sort of reach down and pick them up, uh, there are three of them face down on the floor. Uh, you can see... Uh, the first card you pick up is the Queen of Diamonds, and it's the Tempter card. Or sorry, not the Queen of Diamonds. It's just the, it's just the Tempter card. Uh, uh-huh. The second card that you pick up, and the Tempter card basically has this woman with a sort of a fan, and yeah. it's very suggestive. Uh, the second card is... Um, uh, the... Oops, I lost my spot. Hang on. Do, 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 do. The second card is the marionette card. <laughs> Great, perfect, awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, the third card is the executioner. Ah! 
<laughs> Great. That's probably uh, fine. I'm sure this means nothing. Sure. E absolutely. Evelyn, Evelyn shoves uh, Simon toward Paulton, like, you deal with your son. And then she goes and tries to, like, lay on hands on Tatiana. Okay. I'm just, like, like subtly disciplined. So I'm like, Simon, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. Simon just sort of turns his head up at you and stares at you, Paulton, as uh, as Evelyn throws herself uh, down onto Tatiana and attempts to administer healing. I'm sure it was a sleepy dart. I don't uh, think it was a sleepy dart. No, you can see discolor sort of a greenish black discoloration around her neck that's familiar to you. And, uh, familiar how? Uh, you, you saw um, Simon shoot the same kind of dart at a child and kill it. Uh, no, I rip it out. I throw it. I'm trying to lay on hands quick. All right. I turn to Simon. Like, Simon, did you use the die dart? <laughs> <sighs> Naive little boy. What? What? <laughs> no, that's all you can say. <laughs> okay, this is bad. Uh, can I polymorph Sergey? Sure. All right. I polymorph him into... <sighs> A tiny mouse. What's the save, DC? Uh, mine is a 16. Okay. Is laying on hands not working? Uh, uh, when you uh, lay on hands, you can see that uh, she is dead. Great. She's just dead? Yep, she was killed by the just poison. Insta-dead? I can't cast... Protection from poison and neutralize it real quick before she's dead. I tried to run to her real fast. <laughs> we can find a healer. I bet there's an abbot somewhere. Uh, so let me just look up the the spell here, because yeah. Which one? Protection from poison. Yeah. It's you touch a creature. If it's poison, you neutralize the poison. Uh, and then she has advantage on saving throws against being poisoned. All right, I'm gonna let you uh, make a, uh, just make a wisdom medicine check for me to see if, because oh. technically the, the poison damage would have killed her outright, but I will, uh, given the nature of this spell, there may be some bit of life in her let yet. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was medicine? Yeah. Eight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't think this spell can help her. Well, what about, um, hold on. I turn to Simon. Wait. The, the, uh, okay. Sergei becomes a mouse. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Uh, I put him, I just put him in a tiny bag and just, like, tie him to myself for now. Okay. Okay. This is just one problem solved, just temporarily. <laughs> you got another spell there, Evie? Evelyn's just like throwing magic around. She's like, ah! Cast Revivify! There you go. <laughs> All right. Now she's dead. Now I have to use it. Breath uh, <laughs> comes out of her mouth as she is uh, suddenly alive once more. Evelyn kind of looks at her hand because it's the first time she's actually used the spell. She's like, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to Simon. I'm like, do you have any more of those murder darts? <laughs> I point to the floor. I'm like, drop it. Drop it. <laughs> uh, you can make an intimidate check if you want to. Drop it. Charisma drop intimidate. Drop it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that would be a. Uh, Twelve. He shrugs his shoulders like he doesn't know what you're talking about. It's like, I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we get home. Uh, I'm also going to cast, uh, as soon as Tatiana's awake, a uh, death ward on her. Okay, nice. great. So, <laughs> putting, a, putting a pin in that one. <laughs> Literally. Uh, oh, oh. Got him. So Strix is currently holding her husband as a mouse yes. close to herself. And she says... And when, when Tatiana sort of regains consciousness, the first word out of her mouth is, Sergei. Uh, he's right here, probably squeaking. But 
we need to keep him as a mouse for a little little while because uh, his brother is trying to kill you or him. Kill him, which in turn kills you. It, it's a long story, but will you help us, please? You're insane. Evelyn tries to... to... <laughs> Here, listen to my friend Evelyn who loves Lathander and starts to just Strad is away. a great man. He would never do that. Oh, all right. You're lying. Why do you lie? Evelyn just like takes both her hands between her hands and, and holds them and she... It's bad for your soul. It is. It is. Lion is so bad for our souls. Praise Holy Lathander in heaven for he knows the truth that is in our hearts. And I tell you with everything in me that is true that we are here to save you and that the entire fate of Barovia rests on our ability to do so. I try to persuade her. Okay. Considering she was just murdered by a robot, that should be, um, that should be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's more like it. That is a uh, 25. She is confused, for sure, uh, when she looks into your, your fake little doll eyes. And, uh, but somehow, somehow, she can see in there uh, something which few people can see, um, a genuineness and an honesty. And she says, I believe you. Thank you. Praise the morning, Lord. Let's see. Well, we'll find her, buddies. Now you have to help us. I think that my friend Strix over there, bless her, I'm sorry about the outburst, is going to have to impersonate Sergei. So you're going to have to pretend that she is him. She says, can't we just run away? Hmm. I'm just, I'm just going to say that's never really worked for me. So it's probably not going to work for you. And one way or another, when someone's as evil as Strahd is at his core, He'll find a way to, no, you yeah. know. He says, I, she says, I don't know this evil man you described. Strahd is not like that. He has, com oh. he, has commi he has killed many to defend his family and his lands and his people, but to hurt us, to hurt his brother, whom he loves above all, I can't Evelyn, imagine it. Evelyn kind of gets like persuaded by this and she's like, maybe we could just talk to him and maybe he wouldn't turn evil. That's a good idea. You should try to do that. Yeah. Uh, but... No. I mean, maybe. Mostly no. <laughs> he's, he's, it's too late. He's already, I'm sure he's already made a pact with the dark powers. It's too late. Yeah, I don't think there's a way that we can convince him to act otherwise. The best that we can do is try to counteract his, his plans. So he can't know anything suspicious is happening. So do we do we have anything left to show her that shows like Strahd's do we still have the tome of Strahd? Or anything like you that? You do have the tome of Strahd. And it would not have been written in this timeline. I say, DF, don't you have that book you might be able to show her? It'd be difficult to see, but if you feel up to it. Uh do I have the book? You do. I have the book, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're gonna uh, show her the the book, yeah, where Strahd I'll, I'll, talks about all the horrible things he did in his life. Yeah, I'll show it to her and be like, it's totally his handwriting. Yeah, she'll uh, she'll get up off the off the floor now. Um, you can lay the book out on a table or on a book stand, and uh, she can look at it. And as soon as she starts to go into it, uh, you can see her disbelief changes to fear and horror. That's Evelyn tries to, tries to like comfortingly pat her on the shoulder and like rub her back a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Strix is just like, that's the face we're used to. And she recognizes the hand in which it's written. She knows that's Strand, Strahd's handwriting. Yeah. And she looks at the, 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 the ink and she says, is this blood? Yeah. He yes. gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She yeah, said, he does. She says, oh, no, we can't stay. We have to go. We have to you mean run. We have to end him so that he doesn't hurt all those people. He, we we have to is, set this timeline right. He he is 
a, a god in this world. You will. I don't wish any harm to befall you. That will almost certainly happen if you fight him. It's like, yeah, I've killed him before. He has armies at his command. Don't you think if they see him try to kill you as he will tomorrow, and we save you, that they will understand? She says, I just want to be with my beloved Sergei. I know. And we'll make that happen. Don't you worry. We can make that happen and make sure that you're still the rightful rulers of Barovia. But I think Isn't that the, nice? the best way for that to happen is to simply let yeah. him act. Neither of us colors. want that. We just want to be quiet life together. Oh, doomed love is so cute. Oh. We'll just you save have to your call it that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Strix is just gonna look at her and just be like, "Sorry, you think I'm Barmy, but to save your people." Simon you shoots her have... again. <gasps> what? <laughs> she has death ward on. It's fine. Yep. Simon. It's fine. So uh, it's she's fine. she's reduced uh, once again to uh, she she basically falls into the book stand uh, with another dart in her neck. Uh, and uh, is rendered unconscious by the dart, but not killed by it. Get get rid of this! Get rid of this stupid she, robot! No. <laughs> that brings up my next uh, point. Uh, we You're have to destroy me. Simon. <laughs> That's it. Polymorphing Simon. No, no, hit, Paul. Simon, you dropped those darts, just like Paulton said. You dropped them right now. This is... You dropped them right now. No. I'm trying to persuade him. We have to destroy him. 18 persuasion. Uh, Simon, if you want dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to send you to your coffin, Simon. You're going to go to your coffin and you're going to think about what you did. Holy shit. <laughs> Even I'm like thrown off by how I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> like, you, you listen. <laughs> we are not destroying him, Dia. Obviously. Uh, can we at least put a, a joke? Can we at least put like Simon uh, sort of takes Paulton by the hand, like like sort of a protect me gesture. <laughs> no. Don't. I'm just like Oh my <laughs> God. Can we just put a bag over his head at least? Evelyn Paulton right here, right now. You've bleed every everything else that we've seen. Look at the floor, look at those cars. The executioner, the automaton. It's fucking Simon. One how Sergei dies, it's this dude. Yeah, he's got to go. He has to be destroyed. Whatever precondition you have before. Well, you see, you see, Paulton, there's a third card there. Tempter. Uh, third card? There's Tempter, tempter mm -hmm. Marionette, Executioner. If the Marionette really is the know? Executioner, who's the Tempter? Wait. Do we really know this whole she's story? The, I don't know if we do. If she's the Tempter. Wait, what? Did she tempt Strahd? Tatiana? Oh shit. Is she hearing this conversation? She's unconscious. No, she's passed oh. out. Oh, right, right, cool. By the dark. Sergei's a mouse and we're screwed. Does Sergei hear all of this? Does he understand as a mouse? Uh, <laughs> he's got little mouse ears, but he can't communicate. He can't communicate with us, but he, yeah. he can still understand common, right? Okay, Evelyn. Yeah, we're getting her up. Wake her up, slap her, I don't care. You'll cast need to heal your, her. Heal her and cast your truthy spell. We're gonna find Ooh. out what's going on here. Okay, Evelyn picks her up. Or before you do that, maybe destroy Simon so he doesn't shoot her again. Maybe just yeah, tape his on. mouth just tape his mouth shut. Wait, hold on. Okay. Shove him in the box. I'm gonna <laughs> The box is in with Strahd. Yeah. Oh. Like Simon, Simon, can you hold off on the next dart? until I say so. Why don't you listen to him? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good boy, Diab. He's trying his best. Yeah, he was kill just Tatiana. Born. <laughs> He's just a little baby, Simon. He's She's learning. okay. All right, wake her up, wake her up. So you're gonna, gonna give her some healing? Like I, I, pick, I pick her up first. I put her in the chair. Give her like a point of healing from your lay on hands. Well, at first I set her up. Yep. I want her like in a specific okay. spot. And then I just like. Yeah, she slumped in a one chair. One point of lay on hand. She... And then 
She's Zone of Truth. Again. And Death Ward you again. cast Zone of Truth, Death Ward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I poignantly okay. look at Simon. Don't make she me She looks waste around. One of those. She's sort of lost her sense of bearings, and she says, "What happened? Was you I... fainted. You seemed it overcome. Book. It must have been the book. It was a lot to take in. Dave's gonna take the book back and stash okay. it away. What exactly do you think of Strahd? He's too old for me, but I told him that." He wanted me, and I said, my true heart belongs to Sergei, and he understood, and he has been very supportive. Is there anyone that might think that you're a temptress? Me? I, I don't know. I don't know anyone who might think that about me. I just don't think I'm my, that way. Maybe Strahd? Maybe he might think you're a temptress and make a murder bot to stab you. He didn't make that. I don't think. I'll hire someone. Do you know who did make it? uh, No. Where where did it come from? Do you think there's anyone else around that might be well described as a temptress? Well, there's the Duchess, Dorothy Lisnia. She tried to seduce Strahd, but he would not have any of her. Do you think she she might try to seduce anyone else? I don't know. Nope, that's all we need. It's the Duchess. What's the Duchess? I don't know, but listen to Tatiana. She wants Strahd. Strahd wants Tatiana. Without Tatiana, Strahd wants no one else until she wants Duchess. Mm. Can we roll? The like, Duchess also mentioned of- to you, DF and Strix, or, or sorry, to uh, you, Evelyn and Paulton, down outside the chapel, uh, that when she looked at you, Evelyn, and asked you if you were an original von Weirg, she said she had one of her own. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> uh, okay. So, can I roll an insight check to get some clarity about what I understand about this situation? Sure. It's very poor. It is a nine. Hmm. Murder bot bad. (laughs) (laughs) Great. So, and that's right. where we'll stop for tonight. Oh, no. uh, I've been saying that for months, murder bot bad. <laughs> but he has potential. <laughs> He's trying. Uh, yeah. There's a good he, boy in there. He just right. came out of his coffin today. Give him some time. <laughs> All right. It was a box. It looks like uh, we have it. one more, uh, uh, one more uh, trip to Barovia next week. And... Uh, We'll pick up the game then. Uh, Anybody got some parting remarks they want to share about where they're going or where they're going to be this week or next? Yeah, this week I'll be at San Diego Comic-Con. I won't have a a panel or anything, but I'll be around the uh, Nintendo uh, booth at one of the hotels that's connected to the convention center uh, pretty much all of Thursday and Friday. I I may schedule an actual meetup. Uh, or just tweet it out. Just follow my Twitter at ProJared if you want to do a meetup there. But be sure to go to the Nintendo area at San Diego Comic Con. I'll likely be there along with uh, my wife Heidi, who is cosplaying as the official Inkling girl from Splatoon 2. Cool. Yeah. And I'll also be at Anime Revolution in Vancouver uh, first weekend of August. I'll just be streaming. Like Commander Holly, just come right. watch me stream. I'm gonna be decorating a fun, uh, making some fun uh, dice, a little dice book with Ooh. Strix's symbol on it. So that's gonna be fun. <gasps> very, cool. very, very good. I'm on all my normal stuff this week, uh, Twitch Weekly on Friday on twitch.tv slash twitch. And I have my misclicks game after this, but we're starting late today. So oh. there's an hour between now and when we start on misclicks. So seven to nine is our other game. Oh, um. So coming out in August, uh, there is the official dub for the new fairy tale movie. I think it's called Dragon Cry. Uh, if you go watch it, go watch the dub in theaters. Uh, I voice a character named Gabri. 
and it was a lot of fun. So go okay, check it out. Cool. Oh, and don't forget to go to the Dice Camera Action subreddit. subreddit. It has a wonderful little community around it yes. that I love so much. There's been some really great art in the past uh, couple of weeks. Oh my gosh. It's always yeah. great stuff. Yeah. Holy Y'all smokes. know that we, when we hung out at dinner, a lot of what we did was show each other our favorite fan art on the subreddit. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> We really did. I think I think uh, tonight's episode might inspire a piece or two. We shall see. <laughs> I All hope right. so. Well, we'll we will uh, we'll uh, reconvene next week, uh, uh, picking up to see where this wacky business takes us. <laughs> uh, all right, and uh, until then, everybody have a great week and uh, take care. Be excellent to each other, and until then, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. All right. <laughs>